Okay, welcome to this chat with uh, Arthur Lowe and Haley Lowe. Uh, thanks for sharing your experience of uh, getting a US scholarship with us. And today we're going to just ask you all a few questions about the education pathway that you've taken, Haley. Um, so just to start things off, uh, I'll ask my colleague, Sealing, to uh, kick off with the first question. All right, so Haley, can you please introduce yourself? and share with us your education pathway. Uh, my name's Haley. I'm a national golfer. I'm 17 this year, and I'm currently waiting to go to college in the US in August. I attended St. Nicholas Golf School primary, and then I went on to Raffles Girls School and transferred to the Singapore Sports School in secondary three. And I'm going to be attending the California Baptist University in August. So Arthur, what would you advise parents uh, regarding choosing the right secondary school after the PSLE? Because I think that will impact in some ways what kind of offers you may get from US uh, universities, right? Yes, it does. Um, always remember that um, you would have to send your secondary two or secondary three results to the school. And uh, if you are in a so-called top school, uh, most of the kids are not scoring very well at that point of time. Okay, because the standards are very high and you end up with a very low GPA. So when the US coaches look at your academic uh, results then, they might think that um, you do not meet that academic requirements because um, at all levels, most of the Singapore kids who apply score 3.5 and above. Okay. And also the, the three pathways which we have, the O levels, the IP and the IB program. Uh, actually there's four and one more which is uh, NUS high school, the diploma. Um, Whichever pathway you want to take, uh, you must understand where it's going to get you and uh, which is the best to suit the kid. And that's because the US colleges sometimes may not appreciate uh, a certain school's higher academic standards, like say Raffles Girls School. Um, they do recognize the Raffles Girls School program, but the, the thing is that, uh, let's say for example, uh, if you do an IB program. Um, you cannot get in with your O-levels, which is a base requirement for Singapore Koreans getting into the US university because they recognize our education system as about two years ahead of the rest of the world. Okay, so uh, while the rest of the world needs um, 12 years of education, we only need 10. Because at O-levels, we already completed what those countries learn in 12 years. So even if um, you, you want to uh, take up a sports scholarship um, to the US, whether you are A-levels or O-level students, right, um, that's not going to make much difference in, in the application process because the coach will not say, okay, just because you're A-levels, you can come and finish in two years or two and a half years. It's not, it's not going to happen that way because if he recruits you, he wants you to be on the team for the full four years. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so Haley, why did you choose to do a midstream transfer from Raffles Girl School to Sports School and how was your transition experience like? I decided to midstream from RGS to Sports School because I wanted a better support system for my golf course, mainly because I was playing pretty well in the end of Sec 2 and the start of secondary three, so I thought that I wanted to pursue golf at a higher level. So I thought sports school would be the ideal choice for me because they are like known for producing athletes who are like really good in sports. Um, my transition experience was definitely not not fun. It was not easy. Um, I faced a lot of challenges, and because the syllabus from RGS was completely different from what sports school was doing. I had to relearn everything that they learned in the past two and a half years in that one and a half year that I was there. 
in addition to what I was going to learn in the mid of Sec 3 and Sec 4. So it was definitely not easy because a lot of subjects like social studies or like a math I had never ever touched before. Yeah. So after from uh, a parent's point of view, how was it like uh, the transition for her and seeing her struggle with that transition initially? Um, it was a tough uh, process to get her to transfer uh, administratively because um, parents must take note if your kid is a DSA student like Haley, you are obligated to the school for four years in the sport you DSA through. And um, so chances are they might, you, no one will release you. Okay. Um, and uh, even if they do release you, you have to understand that, um, like I said, the IB, the IP, and the O level program, the syllabus is very, very, very different. So if your kid goes from one program and switches to the other, you are as good as learning the whole program again. So um, you have to make a decision early to get into the right program um, so that your kid can benefit from it. It was really tough for Haley, but um, we, we relied uh, a lot on uh, tuition and um, sports school was very good in the sense that um, they made up lessons for her, uh, deferred exams for her because she was competing. This is something which no other schools in Singapore can do except sports school. So, we really are very thankful for sports school, you know, for where she is now. Thanks, Alex. Okay, Haley. So, when and why did you decide to pursue your post-secondary education overseas, and why the states out of the other countries? I decided to pursue college golf in the states when I was pretty young. I was like ten. And I was attending like a lot of elite camps that were like situated in like the Southeast Asian region. So there were a lot of elite players coming from Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand or where, wherever. And a lot of them pursued college golf. And they came back saying that, wow, it, it's so good. Like it's so beneficial for me and my golf. And I thought, and I heard a lot of stories from them, all good things. And I thought like, this sounds pretty good. Like, maybe I should give it a shot. Like, it sounds pretty good for me. Thank you. Arthur, what were some key considerations when thinking about sending Haley to uh, American college? Um, a sending Asian parent would be, safety would be number one. Okay, sending your kid 10,000 miles away into a um, foreign land, I guess. Safety is number one priority for me and my wife. You know, when we decided to go, we had to give it a long thought whether is the place going to be good for her, safe for her, whether can she be matured enough to uh, take care of herself there, and what sort of support the school has to ensure that she's well taken care. All these were the main considerations. So what about Haley? What were your considerations on top of your parents' considerations? I think they, they covered it all, but in terms of choosing a school, for me it was like the coach, the team environment, and like how diverse the team is. Because like going to the States as an Asian, like you don't want to be outcast by your teammates, you know, because they're going to be your family for like the next four years. So if you're outcast, that's going to like be really bad. You're not going to have fun at all. Yeah, so I think that was a pretty big concern for me. Like another concern was the weather because coming from Singapore, we are in like 37 degrees Celsius all the time. So I didn't want to go to like Iowa where they have like negative 20 degrees Celsius and I have to play golf in the weather. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'll like freeze. Yeah. So like the those are like my main considerations. And like the neighborhood of where the school was situated was really important because I did visit some schools where I really like the campus, the team, the coach, but I didn't like the um the surrounding environment because it's it just seemed very shady. Yeah. Like I just didn't like it. 
Arthur, what were some of the challenges you had uh, in the application for the scholarship? Um, we, we had to look for a good fit for her. And um, just to share that um, the school that we ended up with was not even the first 50 which we shortlisted. Okay, so um, the challenge was to do, your, do our own research and um, make sure that uh, it was a very good fit, not only in terms of the branding of the school, but um, the Lawan Haley, say the coach, we even studied the food that the, the, the school serves, um, the dining options, uh, the dorms, the neighborhood. Okay, this were, um, we had to look into all this and also uh, make sure that academically she's, um, she does well. And um, also her, we have to balance up her sports in Singapore to make sure that she continues to perform well all the way through. So for Haley, what challenges are you expecting to face when you go over to the States? Having going to the States will be a huge culture shock for me. First, I am I am so like not to be racist, but I'm so Chinese. I'm so Singaporean. <laughs> like I I don't like Western food. Like I I don't do not like fried chicken. Like it's a very huge shock to a lot of people and like I'm not a very big fan of burgers so I think the biggest challenge for me will be adapting to the like the food and culture there and like just like being like homesick in general because like I, I will really miss the food in Singapore like it's, it's just so good. <laughs> so Arthur as a parent what do you think Haley would gain from studying overseas in America? Um, the experience, the experience this four years um, studying in America, this would be something which uh, she'll carry forward with her, you know, uh, her in the future where she works, when she goes and if she wants to play golf, continue to play golf. Okay, all this, it's a very invaluable experience for her, which uh, something which not many uh, kids will get to experience. And you certainly cannot get this experience locally the college, collegiate experience. Oh, Hayley, what kind of support do you look forward to receive from your school and the new environment in terms of uh, both, school, both sports and studies? I think the support system there is like, it's amazing. Like, there's a whole faculty of staff just dedicated to student athletes. And there are only about like 500 student athletes in the whole school. So like the, I don't know how to say, like it's it just, it's very good because like there's, there's a coach, there's assistant coach, there's team captain, there's physiotherapist, psychologist, there are like so many other people. And like in terms of academics, also like there are student tutors and like because we are student athletes, we are being like given the flexibility to change your schedule around so whenever you have training you can just tell your professors like I'm training now like can I just change my class to like the morning so I can attend class and training in order to like progress to like the next year like from freshman to sophomore you just have to fulfill a certain number of credits per year so for every class you, at you attend you get like one or two credits so if I attend like most of my classes during the off season, like when, then when it gets to like really packed competition time, like I can just, I can like say like, oh, I'm done in school. Like I don't, I don't even have to like catch up with anything because I, I finished all my classes in the earlier half of the year already. So I think that's really good, especially, especially for me because like, like, to be honest, I'm very bad managing my time. <laughs> so... I think that's very good. And Arthur, for you as a parent, what kind of support do you think Haley will get to balance the sports and studies? I think we are very blessed to get into a school, which, uh, first of all, she has a fantastic coach uh, in the golf team, um, which uh, will be taking care of her holistically over the next four years. Jen, I think he was going to be like 
her so-called uh, stepfather for the next four years, so to speak, to actually look after her, um, uh, daddy figure to, for, to her and the rest of the kids. And the, the school itself, they have got a very, very holistically balanced uh, support system uh, that looks into everything mentally, spiritually, uh, physically. They look into every aspect of a kid, down to even the nutrition part and um, even the academic part. Um, it's really good, the support that they have in place for all the kids. It's, um, uh, I think Haley would, would blossom, you know, in that system. And so Haley, how do you expect competing in the States to impact your future sporting performance? I think competing in the States will be super beneficial for my golf because like firstly, I'll be competing against some of the best players in the world. Like a lot of professional golfers started like playing college golf too. So I think that's a very, very good opportunity for me to like know where I am against the the best players in the world. And like I I'm going to I'm gonna lose so badly in the first first year or two, but I think that's okay because like I'll just be more motivated to train and like beat beat them. So that's really good. And because in Singapore, like golf isn't really a team sport. Like we do have national teams, but all of us, like we just want to beat each other. Like, yeah, like we are, we are friends off the course, but on the course we are, we are not friends at all. Yeah, because everyone just wants to like destroy each other. So in, but in the US, like with the individual events, there are also team events. So as much as you want to beat your teammate in an individual event, you also won't curse them to say like, oh, I hope you play super badly, you know, like, cause everyone wants to win as a team. So I think coming out of the States, coming out of university in the States, I'll be like a lot more of a team player than I am right now. So that's very good for me. So after what advice would you give parents who are thinking about sending their children overseas? Plan early. That's the most important thing you, a parent has to do. You know, don't wait till the last minute. Um, um, understand that sports is a 10 year journey. Whatever sport you do, uh, you just look at schooling when he first started and all that. Um, any sport you do is a 10 year journey. So. Um, you, if you take a 10-year journey, peak at 16, you're talking half time would be probably a PSLE. So that's a point you really have to start thinking. Uh, is that a path I want my kid to take? Um, a kid will, may not be able to understand the whole system and may not be able to make a decision, but just really the parents to help path the way for the kid. And um, when the time comes, the kid can decide which path the kid wants to take. And Haley, what would you tell a student athlete who is in a dilemma whether to go overseas or not? I would say do it. Yeah, I've only heard positives about going overseas to study. And I think the experience is very good, although I haven't really experienced it because I haven't gone to the state yet. But I think, I think it'll be very good. Uh. Yeah, I'm very positive about it. And since we have a bit of more time, Haley, you must tell us your experience representing Singapore uh, last year at the uh, Sea Games. Uh, going to the Sea Games was very tough for me because it, it was a, like, going to the Sea Games is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like not everyone gets to go to the Sea Games, and doing your O levels is also a one-time thing. So I, I just couldn't give like either of it up. Like as much as I wanted to do well on my O-levels, I couldn't like give up the opportunity to represent Singapore in the SEA Games. Like I actually got the spot because I, I won the SEA Games trials in June. And when like my teachers got word of it, they were like, are you serious? It's your O-level year. And like they actually like, they said like, a lot of them encouraged me like not to go. They said, if you want to go to the Sea Games, choose the poly route. Do not take O levels because they thought like I couldn't juggle both. Like they thought if I was gonna go to Sea Games, I would just be super focused on my sport. I won't even study at all. Yeah. So like I think they were very like they were very scared for me. 
but I, in the end, I just, I just said like, no, I want to do O-levels, I want to go play college golf, I don't want to go to poly. Like, there's nothing bad about the poly law, but it was just, it just wasn't for me. And I said, I want to play sea games, I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna juggle my sports and my academics really well, because at the time I actually qualified for sea games, and my results weren't very good. I was, I was competing a lot in the first half of last year, and my teachers were like, you need to stop. Like, it's getting out of hand, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, and like, I, a lot of people actually say like, how are you gonna do this? But I think I ended up pretty well. La. Like, I, I scored not bad. Like, I exceeded my parents' expectations and by won, a lot. And you won an <laughs> academic award too, right? Yeah, I actually got the Student Athlete of the Year Award and the GCO level top score award, which came as a, a, very, a very big shock to me. <laughs> and, and my teachers, they were like, wow, like, you actually did it. <laughs> And like a lot of my teachers, like they they really couldn't believe it because I was failing their class like even before I qualified for Sea Games. And after I qualified for Sea Games, they were like, "Oh, like some level, uh, this girl confirmed like <laughs> flung by people." <laughs> yeah, but I think I did that pretty well, uh, You just need to have your eyes set on your goals because after like July, I don't think I like stepped out of my house for any like to go and meet my friends or anything. Like, I did nothing except studying golf, studying golf. Yeah, so I think that was very important for me. Like, I just had to set my priority straight. Like, I said, okay, I'm going to take my O levels. This is very important to me. I'm going for Sea Games. This is once in a lifetime opportunity. This is also very important to me. And I was like, once you sign the paper, you say, like, I'm going to represent Singapore in the Sea Games. It's no joke, like you can't treat it lightly because not everyone gets to represent Singapore in the Sea Games. Like if you want to go to Sea Games, you gotta take it seriously. And you can't you can't if if you don't wanna go, there's so many people who want to go. Like I know there are at least like ten people in golf like who are like kill me uh, to just get a spot. <laughs> but thank God they didn't. Yeah. So, so Arthur uh, this is a full ride scholarship, right? And from a parent's point of view, it's a significant saving. Yes, yes, most definitely. Um, yeah, it saved us a lot of money. Yeah, yeah my dad actually said, like, if you don't get a full scholarship, you are not going. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just I trained really hard like, until I got that scholarship, and I was like, okay. I guess I'm going, like, thank God. Uh, otherwise, my dad will just have kept me in Singapore. Made me study, like, it's really hard for O-Level. <laughs> okay, Arthur and Haley, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us your experience. And I'm sure that uh, there'll be student athletes out there and parents who would uh, benefit from your sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you for having thank us. You. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.